that's why I just call it what it is when people are trying to censor text, which is very common right now, is it's whitewashing. That's what it is. It's trying to erase or, quote, fix, you know, historical happenings, what happened 100 years ago. There's nothing we can do about it, really. You know, we can put it into context when we're, t when we're teaching these texts or assigning these texts. But, I mean, there's no going back, right? Like, there's no, like, oh, well, you know, and was Mark Twain a racist? Probably. This is why I get into troubles, because I would consider myself center-left. People get upset with me when I say that, but, like, at least politically. But uh, I think that there's an overemphasis of political um, angles on things. So, like, I've, the desire to change that, even the, the kind of sensitivity readers at publishers, they are an inherently political thing. Like, the only reason sensitivity readers exist is to um, kind of lay down laws around what is acceptable and what is not um, and then it gets even very shaky i always use the raw doll stuff as an example because stuff that was edited out of matilda they took out rudyard kipling the reference to rudyard kipling in matilda why did they do that why is that taken out like is that some you know it's political motivated where they replaced it with jane austen so now matilda isn't obsessed with rudyard kipling's poetry she's obsessed with jane austen that strikes me as not even like a sensitivity. That strikes me as an inherently kind of political whitewashing and just things like that, where we've reached a point. I think, again, I don't want to overemphasize this because I think we are kind of slowly shifting away from the hysteria where people were overemphasizing that. And uh, that's happening slowly but surely. But I just, yeah, it, it kind of, it drives me crazy. And I think I get into trouble just because I don't like to play that game in fact i like to mock it i like to think well you're a weird obsessive if you're obsessing over stuff like this like this book is from like 1950 something like why are you obsessing over this book write a new book like <laughs> you know publish something new change it like we don't need to go back and try and censor what came before in order to make people feel comfortable like reading a text like that's the big thing right and it's motivated by this, oh, we're making it better. We're making it better. We're fixing it. We're making it more appropriate. And it's just like, well, by doing that, we're also destroying like the history of literature. Uh, and there's no making that better. <laughs> like, there's no fixing that. Like, you know, it happened. So like there's, yeah. And I think that just comes from a desire to want to do good. So it's always kind of in well-intentioned, but I think we've very very quickly spilled over into overreach into the idea that um, artists are not allowed to experiment or make mistakes or even just use something for emphasis in an artistic way. So that's really my only concern with it. You know, I always say I'm on the side of art, <laughs> like I'm on the side of art. Like I, I don't care about I really don't care about the political stuff in terms of literature study. I care about the books, I care about the artists, I care about uh, the history of it, the kind of legacy of the entire culture. I think that that's dismissed as easily replaceable or something like that. I say, no, 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 no. Like this, like we can only write the way we do now because of thousands of years of history and culture that came before us, you know, however ugly, however, you know, horrid it is to look at now where we're the, it's just, this is it like we have to kind of build on top of it we can't be eliminating things or the foundation crumbles and then we have almost nothing you know